Welcome to the GMAT 41's Calculus Exclusive Online Tutorial. In our class today, I'll be teaching you how to apply the first principle first to establish the fact that the derivative of a constant is always equal to zero. That's to say if you differentiate a constant, your answer will be zero. I'll also be teaching you how to use the first principle to solve problems in which the powers of the independent variable is either negative or a fractional power. We are going to look at these three questions in our class today. Now, you remember that in our last class, we established the first principle, and of course, we used it to solve some problems. But some of these, of course, problems we solved, the powers of the independent variable there was a positive whole number. And so today, we'll be moving further into applying this first principle to some other kind of questions. But before I go into solving these questions we have here on the board, please, I'd like to remind us that this GMAT 41's calculus exclusive online tutorial, which is strictly calculus, runs fully on Telegram, and you are welcome to join us. You can get a paid subscription at an affordable fee in order to join the class. Don't forget also, we have our channels for many other subjects or courses, okay? Both for primary, secondary school, and higher institution students. We are also on YouTube, so you can search for GMAT41 and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share our videos so that your friends and others will get to see our content and also learn from our educational tips there. All right, so the very first question we're going to solve is based on proving that the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. Using the first principle, prove that the derivative of a constant equals zero. How do we solve this problem? Now, let us say that the function, which is equal to a constant, is y, and we are taking the constant to be equal to c. So I'm going to write, let y be equal to f of x, which is equal to c. This simply means that y is equal to c. Now take note, c is a constant. Now, when we derive the first principle, I explained that a change in the independent variable, which is x, as we decided to select the alphabet for it, will lead to a corresponding change in y. We called those changes delta x, delta y. But if you look at the function given to us, y is equal to a constant. There is no x there. Yeah, I can go ahead proving this without bothering us about x. But for the purpose of clarity, I want us to introduce x into this function. Please, you need to take note that giving y to be equal to c is still the same as y equal to c x raised to the power 0. This is the same as y equal to c. Which means this term given to me here, y equal to c, is the same as multiplying this c by x raised to the power what? 0. You know, x raised to the power 0, a number raised to the power 0 will give you 1. So that this x raised to the power 0 is 1 times c will still give you c. So I am mathematically consistent, accurate. I've not changed the question given to me because of the power that I used for x there. And now we have succeeded to introduce x into this function. So we can now apply the knowledge of first principle, although this x that I introduced with power 0 does not really make any much difference. Because at the end of everything, that x will still go off. So, let's move on. A change in x will produce change in y. And that change we use delta x and y to represent that. So we're going to add it to x and y. So, we have y plus delta y equal to c, open bracket, that x now, will add delta x to it. And remember, this x is raised to power 0, so we're going to put this to power 0. This whole term in bracket raised to power 0 will give you 1. So, you have 1 times c. Which means, ordinarily, I could have started solving this thing directly by doing y plus delta y equal to c. But I just decided to show you this. 
to help you actually see clearly, you know, what happens to x there. x in this case for a constant has power 0, okay? Now, we are going to have y plus delta y to be equal to c, which would give us that delta y made subject of the formula will give us c minus y. I've told you this y to the right hand side. Now, we know that this y is equal to what? c. So I'm going to replace y with c. Delta y will be equal to c minus. In place of this y, I will write what? c. And so delta y will be equal to 0. Because c minus c is equal to 0. We are trying to obtain dy dx of this constant c. And to do that, I will have to divide through by what? Delta x. So this is going to give us delta y over delta x equal to 0 over delta x. Delta y over delta x will now give us 0. Remember, 0 divided by delta x will be equal to 0. At this point, we succeeded to clear off delta x from the right hand side. So we can now take limit. We're going to take limit of this right hand side we have here, you know, when delta x approaches 0. That will give us our dy dx. So it implies that dy dx is equal to limit of this number 0 on the right hand side as delta x tends to 0. In our last class, I told you something, that if you take the limit of a constant as the independent variable, in this case, x, you know, tends to any value, the limit of that constant will still be equal to what? The constant. Therefore, limit of 0. 0 here is a constant, is a number, as delta x tends to 0. The answer will still give us what? 0. It simply means that dy dx is equal to 0. Proof. So you see clearly that if you differentiate any constant any time, your answer is going to be what? Zero. So just think about this. Imagine I give you y to be equal to, let's say, 2x raised to the power 3, all right, and then plus 5. You are asked to find the y dx, the derivative. Okay, differentiating directly, this is going to give you the power times this. We are still going to prove all these standard derivatives. Are you following, right? Of course, in our next class, that's what we are going to deal with. Because I'm trying to differentiate this without bothering myself about first principle. I'm using the standard. Use the power here to multiply these two. You get 6, then x raised to the power 3 minus 1, which will give you 2. Plus derivative of this 5. This 5 is a constant. There is no variable x there that you're differentiating with respect to. So derivative of that 5 will give you 0. So that dy dx of this function, 2x cubed plus 5, the answer is what? 6x raised to the power 2. The constant is simply equal to 0. So take note of that, right? Anytime you differentiate a constant, your answer will be what? That is correct, 0. Let us now get set for question number 2. Question number 2 reads, Assuming that the performance of the height of a thermometer's liquid as a function of the temperature of the environment is given as H of T equal to 5t minus t raised to power minus 2 centimeter. Using the first principle, find the rate of change of the height of the liquid in the thermometer when it measures a body of temperature 2 degrees centigrade. You know, I told you from our startup class, calculus is a very important aspect of mathematics, dealing with how things change in real life. So I have this problem, it's about the height of the liquid in the thermometer and temperature of the environment. You just think about when you go to hospital and a thermometer is used to take your temperature. Of course, you know that the movement of the liquid in that, temp in that thermometer is as a result of the temperature of your body. Now we are asked to find the rate of change of the height of the liquid in the thermometer when it measures a body of temperature 2 degrees centigrade. Now, from the question, this is the function given to us. The function given to us is h of t. h of t equal to 5t minus t raised to the power minus 2 in centimeter. Now, we are going to work on this 
function given to us. H is the height. T is the temperature, of course, of the environment, you know, uh, of the body that the, temperature, the, the thermometer is measuring. For us to get the rate of change, you know that rate of change is simply dy dx. So we're going to obtain the dy dx of this, the differential coefficient. But in this case, it's going to be dh dt. And so working it out using first principle according to the question, let us see what we do. You know that any change in the temperature will affect the height of the liquid in the thermometer. Is that not so? So we're going to have that h plus delta h will be equal to... You come to this, and then you add delta t to wherever you have t there. But one thing is this. We have to rewrite this t raised to power minus 2 to be in this form. Let me show it here. This implies that h is equal to 5t, then minus 1 over t raised to power 2. Using negative index law of indices, t raised to power minus 2 is the same as 1 over t raised to power 2. So, coming to this 5t, I'm going to have... 5, open bracket, t plus delta t, then minus 1 over t raised to power 2. It's going to be 1 over that t plus delta t, then in bracket raised to power 2. All that I have to do is to simplify this. But you know that delta h will be made subject of the formula. So delta h, standing alone, will now give us. I'm going to open up this quickly. We don't have time to waste. So 5 times t will give us 5t plus 5 times delta t. Give us 5 delta t. Then coming to this part, this is minus 1 over. I'm going to expand this t plus delta t or raised to power 2. I've told you how to do that already. You can work on that. If you do so, it's going to be t raised to power 2, which is t squared. And then multiply t by delta t. Multiply it by the 2 you have, which is the power. That's going to give us plus 2t delta t. Then finally, you have plus delta t all squared. I've expanded that. And so you see, it's going to be minus this h will cross to that side. So I'll put minus h. We know the value of h already to be 5t minus 1 over t squared. So delta H will be equal to 5T plus 5 delta T minus 1 all over T squared plus 2T delta T plus delta T all squared minus open brackets. What is our H? Look at that. So we substitute 5T minus 1 over T squared. We are going to work this out quickly. If you come to this part and you open up the bracket, this will give us minus 5t plus 1 over t squared. Now, this minus 5t, we cancel this 5t. They are like terms. This plus 5t, it goes off with this minus 5t. Now, if I do that, I would have delta h equal to 5 times delta t minus 1 all over t squared plus 2t delta t plus delta t squared and then plus 1 over t squared. At this point, what do I do? I'm going to work on this fractional part, work out their LCM. But to do that, I want to factorize negative sign from this term and this term. If I pull out negative, this will become positive, and this will become negative, like factorizing minus out. Doing that, this is going to give us delta H equal to 5 delta T, then minus open bracket. I'm going to work out the LCM of this now. But before then, let me show you what is going to be left. This will be left with 1 all over t squared plus 2t delta t plus delta t squared. And then this will change to minus because of the factorization of this minus. Is that okay? Let's see what we're going to get. Delta H will now be 5 times delta t minus open bracket. LCM of this is simply multiplying this term by this term. So I'm going to write it out as t squared, open bracket. Let me use view marker for this. t squared minus 2t, oh no, this plus 2t delta t plus delta t squared. So this is the LCM of the denominator. Now, I'm going to put my long division sign there. 
That is a long uh, division there. And so we are going to work out this and see. This LCM, T squared times this bracket divided by this term. You know that this one will cancel this out. T squared will be left. Use it to multiply the numerator. You get T squared. Then minus. This LCM divided by this T squared now. We'll cancel this T squared and we will be left with this term. This term in bracket times 1 would give us that same term in bracket, which is T squared plus 2T delta T plus delta T squared. And this will be equal to 5 delta T minus... I'm going to open up this bracket with this negative sign. If you open up this bracket with, with this negative sign, T squared will cancel this T squared. So let them go off. I'm going to work it out straight. This will become minus. This will become minus. But I would like to bring out this minus out once. Since you know if this negative sign opens up this bracket, everything in the bracket will become minus minus. So minus is common to that numerator. Having cancelled this t squared minus t squared, I want to pull out that minus. That minus will change this one to what? Plus. So this will now become plus, open bracket, 2t delta t plus delta t squared. We're going to divide this by t squared, open bracket, t squared plus 2t delta t plus delta t squared. Good. At this point, this is what I am now going to do, all right? You know that we have this to be delta H, okay? I'm going to divide through by delta T. But while I am dividing through by delta T, I want you to take note of something. That in the numerator, delta T is common. Delta T is what? Common. So you can choose to factorize that delta T out. This becomes delta H divided by delta T equal to 5 times delta T. That is 5 delta T. If you are dividing everything by delta t, it means you divide this by delta t, then plus you divide this by delta t. Remember that the t is representing temperature here. So this will be divided by delta t. Then, coming over to this, the numerator delta t is common. Plus, I'll bring out that delta t which is common. Open up brackets. What will be left in the bracket will now be 2t plus this will be delta t. Because one of it has been factorized. And then I'm going to divide this by, remember, you divided through by delta t. That is why this delta h became delta h divided by delta t. This is 5 delta t divided by delta t. So this term here, even though you factorize the delta t out, remember you are dividing here by delta t as well too. So it's going to be t squared t squared, open brackets, t squared, plus 2t delta t, and then plus delta t squared. Now, I am meant to divide all of these by delta t. That is all over delta t. So let me do that. All over delta t. Now, mathematically, this denominator here, in the numerator part, if I let me close it, in this bracket, the denominator of this numerator fraction mathematically will come down, which means that this delta t will cancel out this delta t here. Does that make sense? So cancel out that delta t. And what would we be left with? This is going to give us delta h over delta t to be equal to even at this point 2, you know, this delta t will cancel this delta t. So we have 5 plus this term, which is 2t plus delta t, all over t squared, open bracket, t squared, plus 2, 2t delta t, and then plus delta t squared. So this is what we are going to get at this point now we will take our limit as delta t tends to zero. So taking that limit as delta t tends to zero, that's going to give us dh dt will be equal to limit of this whole term. 5 plus, open bracket, we have a 2t plus delta t all over t squared. Open bracket, 
t squared, then plus 2t delta t plus delta t all squared. So limit of this whole term. I'm going to enclose this in another bracket like this. Limit of this whole term as delta t tends to 0. Delta t tends to 0. Of course, you know, once you take limits as the variable tends to 0, all you have to do is to substitute the value of that limit into the given expression. So this is going to be equal to 5 plus, coming over here, you have open bracket 2t plus, this is delta t. So what do you do? You fix 0 there. All over t squared. Open bracket t squared plus 2t. This is delta t. Again, what do you do? You fix up 0 there. And then plus squared delta t, which is plus 0, you square it. Good. Now you see that all of this is just uh, normal mathematics now. Uh, we've, we've done the main work already, you know. Once it starts converting to the this, the that, as the case might be, it's just ordinary mathematics, okay? It's no longer calculus, because it's just substitution like did here. Concluding, you see that dh, dt, will now be equal to 5 plus. If you come over to this, you're going to have 2t all over. This becomes 0. This part will become 0. This will become 0. So we'll be left with t squared times t squared, which will give us t raised to power 4. In conclusion, the rate of change of the height of the liquid in the thermometer with respect to the temperature will be equal to 5 plus 2 divided by t raised to power 3. Remember that here this t will cancel this, one of these, so that this will become power 3. And so we're going to have plus 2 divided by t raised to power 3. And this, of course, is the rate of change in terms of obtaining dy, dx, dh, dt, in this case. Now we are asked to obtain the rate of change at the temperature of 2 degrees Celsius. So of course, this wouldn't be our final required answer, but of course we've gotten the main thing. I'm going to write now that at T equal to 2 degrees Celsius. Now dh, the rate at which the height will change with respect to temperature, and that temperature is 2 degrees Celsius, will simply be equal to, you come to this, and then you fix 2, wherever you see T. So this becomes 2 all over, in place of this T, you're going to fix 2. And that 2 is raised to power 3. Let me use a blue shade of marker to do the substitution. Raised to power 3. Good. Now let us solve this out. 5 plus 2 all over 8. If you work this out, you are going to get a... Uh, because this is 5 plus 2 divided by 8. 8 times 5 will give you 40. 40 plus 2 will give us 42 over 8. I'm going to write that 42 all over 8. And 42 over 8 would give us 5 point something, you know. So let's find out. Um, I can do the conclusion here, please. Permit me. Let me do that here. Therefore, dh dt is equal to 42 divided by 8 is 5 point 2. So 5.25. And of course, the unit is going to be the height, which was given in centimeter, so cm per degrees Celsius. Answer. This is the rate at which the height of the thermometer will change when the temperature is 2 degrees centigrade. It's simply telling us that once the temperature is 2 degrees centigrade, the temperature of the, of, of the body that the thermometer is measuring the height of the liquid will be 5.25 increment, will increase by 5.25 centimeter. That's the interpretation of this. All right, you can go through this, replay the video, and listen to all explanations I gave, especially at this point where we're doing the main work. We'll be going to our last question for our class.